So welcome everybody to today's Fisherman Service. We have uh, today to speak to us, Marilyn Chrisman, who is going to talk to us about her memories of church life. Marilyn, thank you very much for speaking today. You're on. Hey, how rare it is, how lovely, the fellowship of those who meet together. I'm going to light a pretend chalice. <laughs> oh, I'm not holding it up high enough. Oh, it's not lighting. There we go. We gather this hour as people of faith with joys and sorrows, gifts and needs. We like this beacon of hope, sign of our quest for truth and meeting and celebration of the life we share together. During the pledge drive, I was asked to speak about what drew our family to First Parish and why we stayed all these years, 49 this fall. So many memories were stirred up while I was writing, memories that I wanted to share because there are a few of us old, old timers left. So this is not a history of our church, but a journey of memories. When we first came, there was no minister, no choir, few young families, and it seemed everyone was from Duxbury. I like to tell the story of being asked at the first coffee hour we attended where we lived. When we replied, Pembroke, the response was, oh. When Pete Peterson was called as minister, so much changed. He had a young family and other younger people began to come. Jackie Smith Miller became RE director and I was very involved in helping the church school grow and flourish. Jackie had the ideas and I was her right hand for many years. Under Jackie's leadership, the church school grew many times over. The first church school class I taught with Bill and Bruno and Emily Zoltowski was grades five through eight all together in the assembly hall. That changed quickly until by the end of Jackie's tenure, we hardly had space for all the classes. Somewhere in that time, Elaine Bryant Savansky joined with her husband, Paul Bryant and their children and a junior choir was established. I have a vivid memory of the junior choir singing on the stage at some church school event and hearing a lovely solo voice from the back of row. It was our daughter and she's still singing for all of us. We put on elaborate dramatic productions every year and the pageant grew from two angels to countless angels during that time. As an aside, Paul Bryant was a goldsmith and he made the chalice that we light every Sunday. I think of Paul every time we light it. In the sanctuary, we move from a wondrous organ music played by a very young Ed Swanborn to the addition of an adult choir. Over the years, we have listened to the music of so many talented children, teenagers and adults. We've watched young dancers being part of our services Always the music and dance has been a source of wonder and appreciation. The Christmas Eve service came into being when a group of young parents asked if we could have a short service that would include our children. We began with taped music, simple stories, and a quiet time out from all the Christmas goings on. Now look what we have. It happened slowly and with experiments. Does anyone here remember the year when the service included a dog with antlers being part of the Christmas skip, skip. I think we all long for the return of the service. Thinking of the of performances of all sort makes me think of something amazing about the use of this church family. No matter how badly the play rehearsals went, how disorganized the pageant seemed to be, how unprepared the high school youth often seemed to be for their service, at least when I was the hip advisor. The final result was always wonderful. I called it the first parish youth miracle. They always came through brilliantly. There were and are so many wonderful people who sat in the pews to watch and listen to our youth. They were an audience that gifted our children with a self-confidence to speak and perform in front of others. As a parent, I was always grateful for that. Those people have made this congregation a truly loving community. 
I could hardly begin to list all the members I have felt privileged to know here. I will list a few very strong memories. Hobie Spring and his bow tie and tweed jacket, who was so committed to First Parish. Harriet Marsden, who led the Alliance Dramatic Productions and gave me the magnificent rhubarb plant that flourishes in my garden and provides the rhubarb for the pie someone always pays a great deal of money for at the church fair because he had such wonderful memories of Harriet. Harriet Borgeson, who always sat in her mother's pew at the back of the church. And I was privileged to get to know serving on the search committee for Robbie. Marion Fletcher, Bev Johnson's mother, who I remember best chatting with my daughter and Jenny Smith when they were about eight or so. Of course, Bev, who has been such a committed, hardworking leader here for so much longer than I have been around. One of the most important people to, on my list is Jackie Smith Miller. We had a long history together and there should have been more time to add to that history. I could add so many more names to this list. Names of people I knew well and people I only knew slightly. Surely the most significant blessings of this church are people who continue to enrich my life. I challenge you to make your own list. It won't be as long as mine because I've had more years to add to it, but I bet it will be a considerable one. A very special memory is being involved with the partner church program Michael Cato learned about the program and was the leading force in our commitment to it. Bill and I traveled to Transylvania with Michael and his wife, Helen, along with Reverend Jim Robinson and his wife of the Brewster Church, who was already partnered with a church that shared a minister with ours early in the program. Since then, we returned once for the dedication of the church they built. It has been an absolutely wonderful experience in my life and has enriched the lives of many of our members. All this has very been, been very personal and so much has happened during our time here. In those 49 years, we've had three ministers, which assume we meet, it means that we're doing some things well. The congregation no longer relies on the minister to be the leader as it did long ago, but rather our guide and an advisor. There is no question we have learned to govern ourselves much more efficiently and compassionately over the years. The present governing board works much better than the former, former parish committee who had representatives of all the elected, elected committees. Too many people met incredibly long meetings. It is impressive that we recognize our challenges readily and move to meet them. We have changed procedures openly when needed. For instance, the treasurer's responsibilities have been divided among several people, which not only makes the job easier, but provides an in-house check on all the work. There will never be a time again when a church member can decide to undertake a huge project, take the money from the church income and have the job done in the summer when no one was really looking. I won't tell you who did that long ago. Actually, Bill and I couldn't remember his name, but it did happen. And all uh, a really excuse me a really significant change has been the social justice efforts. I cannot remember any commitment to a social justice program when we first came here. Now we have an active committee and open opportunities for everyone to participate in programs. Our box project is one. It involves about sixty people and has been going on for many years, thanks to Carrie Meyer. We have special collection Sundays, which follow a procedure that involves many people, as well as our cell tower grant program. There's been a steady growing awareness of social justice issues over the years. We have truly matured as a congregation in how we learn about and support these issues. Perhaps that sums up the most significant change in our in first parish over the years I've been here. We have moved from a congregation that largely seemed to think the minister should be our leader and get things done to a congregation that leads itself with amazing talents and, de and dedication of its members. There's so many other memories, such as weddings, child dedications, memorial services, musical events, potluck suppers, Christmas and summer fairs, our service trip to New Orleans. 
What are the things that you would put on your list? Could be where you should go out in joy and be led back in peace. The mountains and the hills before you shall burst into song and all the trees of the field shall clap their hands. Thank you. Thank you very much, Marilyn. That was wonderful. Um, I think that uh, Michael has a few words to say. Michael, looks like you're unmuted. Uh, yes, Marilyn, thank you so much for um, uh, such a lovely and informative presentation. And thanks to Jim for saying, no, let's just keep it on Zoom uh, today, uh, which if, if I were calling it, uh, a bunch of us might be really wet. So I, <laughs> I, I, I'm glad that a uh, more sensible head uh, prevailed there. Uh, next week, uh, we hope we'll be both back out on the patio and on Zoom. I don't see Lynn Marples uh, uh, in, in the congregation now, but he is scheduled to do the service next week. Um, Lynn's been a regular provider of services over the years at, for fishermen, although he somehow managed to escape last year. Uh, and I don't know what his topic will be, but I'm going to encourage him again to address double entry bookkeeping and why that has made the world a better place. Um, we'll see. Uh, if you'd now please join in the spirit of prayer. Today, we give thanks to the storytellers for it is the stories we tell ourselves and each other which help shape our lives and give them meaning. Reflect on the stories we have heard today, some familiar, some new, but those familiar ones told with a new slant. And let's respond to Marilyn's challenge to think of our own list of memories, people, and events. So our thanks to Marilyn today and to all of the storytellers. And let us now pause to give thanks to all the utility workers, public safety, health workers, and others who will be struggling over the next few days to keep us and the communities near us safe. And may we all gain the wisdom and vision to face the weather and climate challenges that will be upon us in the years ahead. May it be so, amen. All right, well, Michael, I'm gonna stop the recording and then we can break out into rooms and uh, have a little coffee chat.